Sports Snippets, Dennis Sullivan here. It's Sunday, it's the 13th of December. Here to talk about the Miami Dolphins as they fall to the Kansas City Chiefs by a score of 33-27. If you do like the content of this particular video, go ahead, hit that like button. I would appreciate it very much. Let's get into the discussion of this game, guys. As the Dolphins fall to eight wins, five losses on the season, still right in the middle of things when it comes to possible AFC playoff aspirations, shall we say, as they are very much alive this season in a, in a playoff appearance, for a playoff appearance. They do fall, though, to the Chiefs. Some very big concerns right now with the Dolphins when it comes to really the health of the offense at some key positions, such as wide receiver. Devontae Parker leaves the game about halfway through with an injury. Mike Gusecki leaves late in the game with what appears to be a shoulder injury. Dolphins, I mean, they scrapped it out. They get high scores. If we're going to have like a separate scrap department and, and being feisty and scrappy, the Dolphins score well in that department, but they just didn't have enough against the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs who improved their record to an NFL best 12-1. and one. In the beginning parts of this game, it was more the Dolphin offense. It just wasn't enough in the first half, if that makes sense. Because when all was said and done, the Dolphins really showed that they can produce yardage and even points uh, as they put up 27 points and lose in this game 33-27. to But the first half is really where they kind of lost this game, in my opinion. They, they jump out to a 10 nothing lead. And then the offense just kind of stops, uh, for lack of a better explanation. And the lack of a running game is really starting to hurt this team. We saw the same thing last year with the lack of run blocking. I mean, it's very difficult to... Let's put it this way. It's very difficult to succeed as a running back for the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> All right, I think that's that's probably the best way I can explain it. It doesn't really look to be that many lanes to run and it just it, nothing really established there and two is big with the play action uh type pass, you know, he's big with with really, you know, appearing that there might be a run. That's his style, right? He kind of had that at, when he was at Alabama in college. He's taking it with him to the NFL, and that's fine, but there's really not much of a running game for the defense to be kind of on their heels all concerned about, uh, which in before I get into the breakdown of the statistics, guys, this is kind of why I've been saying that for this season, Fitzpatrick is probably your better choice. I still stand by that because at least you're going to have more of a of a passing game downfield, in my humble opinion. Two is growing. I mean, I can't really say many negative things about his play because he has improved in these last few weeks. And yes, he is the future of the Dolphins. So, I mean, you can certainly make a valid case that the Dolphins should just stay and stick with Tua for the rest of the season, and I get it. I'm not going to really put up a, as much of an argument as I might have maybe three, four, five weeks ago, but at the same time, you know, against a better team, against a team not, a, not only better, but a potentially great team, could be a Super Bowl back-to-back -back champion team in the Kansas City Chiefs. You're going to need a little more. You're going to need a little more. The defense had some very big moments. They, they, they would cause four turnovers with the defense and also have three interceptions against Patrick Mahomes, which I believe it's the first time in Mahomes' career where he had thrown for three interceptions, if I'm not mistaken. I think I overheard that on the telecast. Um, but when the offense can't see here's the thing when the offense can't consistently control the ball not that they have to have these long drives every time down and and have a complete 
dominance with the time of possession. I'm not quite saying that. We have to be realistic too. But it's just these three and outs early in the game. You're just giving a team like the Chiefs too many chances. And it's going to come back and get you. Um, when all was said and done, as I mentioned, I mean, you look at the yardage, you look at the productivity of the offense. I mean, it really, it really wasn't that bad, guys. Uh, Tua would throw for 318 yards on 28 out of 48 uh, passing. He threw for two touchdowns. His first interception he would throw uh, on the season. That was an interception by Teron uh, Matheu for the Kansas City Chiefs. That was Matheu's sixth interception of the season. Uh, he was sacked four times with Tua. So the Chiefs are putting a pretty good amount of pressure on him. Lynn Bowden Jr. would uh, come in, not as quarterback, but on like more of a gadget play, throw a pass that was incomplete. We're starting to see a little bit of that here and there from, uh, or Bowden, uh, excuse me, Lynn Bowden Jr. Um, DeAndre Washington, so here's part of it too. I mean, you know, you have injury at the running back position. Dolphins substi substituting uh, Patrick Laird in there, so it was more of like a DeAndre Washington, Patrick Laird backfield, which didn't do that bad. I mean, Washington would run the ball 13 times for 33 yards. That's still under three yards a carry. Laird fared a little bit better in terms of average yards per carry. Four carries, 18 yards. Tua would rush six times for 24 yards and a touchdown. Bowden Jr., one carry, two yards. Uh, Bowden Jr. also would lead the Dolphin receivers with seven catches and 82 yards receiving for a banged-up group of Dolphin receivers. Mac Hollins would have uh, 66 yards receiving on five catches. Mike Gusecki played a really good game would have 65 yards on five receptions and two touchdown receptions would Mike Gusecki have in this game, including that beautiful touchdown catch in the second half. Unfortunately, as we saw, Gusecki leaves the game with what appears to be a shoulder injury, which is like the worst thing that could happen to the Dolphins at this stage of the season as we head into the stretch run of the final three weeks of the season. Jakeem Grant would have three catches, 33 yards. Then it was Adam Shaheen, two catches, 27 yards. Durham Smythe, two catches, 19 yards. Washington out of the backfield, two catches, 17 yards. Malcolm Perry, a catch for five yards. Patrick Laird out of the backfield, a catch for four yards. Xavier Howard would intercept a pass for the fifth game in a row. And that gives him, I believe this is an NFL leading nine interceptions. Byron Jones and Eric Rowe would also have interceptions for the Dolphins. For the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes is amazing again. Uh, this game he would throw for 391 yards, 24 out of 34. Two touchdowns, as mentioned, the three interceptions. He was sacked three times. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Now the Chiefs really didn't run the ball that well either so neither team could really get anything going on the ground which kind of turned it into a little bit more of a somewhat of a wide open type game in terms of you know how many yards were passed for I mean we saw over 700 yards passed for which is a pretty good total between the two teams Clyde Edwards Hilaire 16 carries 32 yards Tyreek Hill the wide receiver would have a carry for 32 yards Le'Veon Bell two carries 21 yards It'll be interesting to see how much the Chiefs are going to start to use Le'Veon Bell as we start heading into the playoffs. I wouldn't be surprised if his role starts to increase steadily in the next few weeks. I'm just kind of throwing that out there. I mean, you've got a veteran in Le'Veon Bell who can still produce running the football and even out of the backfield as a pass receiver. Mahomes would add five catches for nine yards. A five carry, uh, running the ball, or five carries, I'm sorry, for, five, for nine yards. Travis Kelsey had a huge game for the Chiefs. Eight catches, 134 yards, and a touchdown. He was all over the place. Tyreek Hill had three catches, 79 yards, and a touchdown. Edwards Hilaire out of the backfield, 
five catches, 59 yards. Sammy Watkins had two catches, but for 52 yards, nice average there. Uh, McCall Hardman, three catches, 40 yards. Bell out of the backfield, two catches, 14 yards. Demarcus Robinson had a catch for 13 yards. So guys, the Chiefs, I mean, looking strong, 12-1. and one. I mean, they're looking to, and remember this year in the NFL, the bye will only go to the top seed of the AFC and the top seed of the NFC. So it's not top two seeds get buys this season. It's only the top seed. Chiefs are looking real good to get that bye in the first round. Mahomes is amazing. You know, when you watch him, he's just an amazing player. For the Dolphins, I mean, this is the thing, guys. The the injury factor now is becoming a problem out of, I don't want to say out of nowhere, but today was a really bad day when it comes to injuries for the Dolphins. I mean, you lost Devontae Parker. I'm not sure of the status. you got to have him. I will say this. Devontae Parker and Tua just haven't made a connection. Um... There's just not much cohesiveness there between the two as far as productivity on the field. It seems as if Tua has hooked up with, as far as throwing the ball to and successfully throwing the ball to Mike Gusecki in these last few weeks, much better than Devontae still hasn't come around with his uh, productivity with Tua. I mean, I'm not blaming Devontae. I'm not blaming Tua. It just doesn't seem to be working right now. That's one we're going to have to watch moving forward, assuming Devontae Parker is healthy next week and the weeks to come. So for now, guys, Dolphins, I mean, they hang in there. They lose 33-27. It's a six-point loss. Um, they were gritty. They were determined. They hung in there. But now we got to watch these injuries. The health of the team becomes a concern. Especially now as these last three games, they're going to be home against the Patriots next weekend. Next Sunday, the 20th, got to have that game. Then it's on the road against the Raiders and the Bills on the road as well. Last two weeks of the season. So this is Dennis Sullivan. Go ahead, leave a comment below, guys. If you like the content of this video, go ahead, hit that like button. And I'll talk to you real soon. Bye for now.